today we're going to be talking about one of the harder items to juggle as a professional in software development, but really in any profession, and that's making commitments. I'm not just talking about making commitments, but how to not make commitments when you don't think you're going to meet those deadlines, or you, or you think that what's being asked isn't reasonable, and how to really respond back in a you know politically correct way and a professional way. So we're going to talk about things to avoid, how to say yes, how to say no, and just so there's some items that have stood out to me over the years that you can notice and say, okay, I now know how to handle this somewhat stressful information because somebody wants something done and you're, you have to tell them that it can't be done sometimes. And we're going to talk about how we can handle that. I want to thank our sponsor for this video, Dev Mountain Coding Bootcamp. You can check them out at devmountain.com. If you're interested in iOS development, quality assurance, full stack web development, Salesforce, UI, UX, they have a bunch of great courses. Some are online, some are in, per in person. If it's in person, they include housing with their tuition. And of course, if uh, after hours to match any of the crazy schedules. I'm, I'm currently uh, have the software quality assurance one pulled up, you can get up and going as little as six weeks with the software Q&A bootcamp. First, the reason that we need to understand how to say yes and no to commitments is we have to understand what a commitment is. <clears throat> Basically, I am um, in software development as a professional software engineer. When I say something's going to get done, it is going to get done. But that's me saying it, not the business. So say my boss comes to me and says, can you get this done by Tuesday? I say, no, Wednesday. And they say, okay. I have now committed, in my mind, to get it done by Wednesday. Now, the first thing I want to sort of stress is not to give days. And what I mean by that is give ranges. This is a much better way of estimating, because that's really what we're doing a lot of times, is we're estimating in our head what we can commit to and you know that wednesday day may be something that you could in theory hit as long as it landed in the middle of the you know the long date and the the end date but a better way of saying is you know dylan's boss comes up says dylan can you build us this feature uh in the next three days it's a high priority and i say uh big boss man i it is possible, but the the reality of the situation is it could take anywhere from three to seven days, depending on what hiccups happen. You know, when you're especially when you're committing to things in an agile environment, it's not like a waterfall environment where everything in theory is sort of planned out. Sometimes there's a little bit of discovery that happens. Sometimes things don't roll out the way that you would expect, and then you have you know an extra day here, an extra day there. So the first thing I would say with your commitments is start giving date ranges and start leaning towards the higher ones when you're pointing your stories in like a in a scrum and when you're like you know some people are thinking it's three points some th people are thinking five lean higher because at the end of the day if you deliver it early great but if you de deliver it late you're gonna have some upset people the next thing i would stress to you is to avoid caving this is gonna be a somewhat awkward situation because at the end of the day, your boss, whether they're another dev or whoever it is, they they are representing the business goal. And the business wants to get as much value out of their resources as they can. And their developers are a resource. And so they're going to try and squeeze out as much of you as you can. And it's really your job as a professional to say, look, I care about the code quality. I care about making sure that I, I, I can see the long-term picture, not the short-term gain. And it's your job to protect the code because no one else will. So one thing to avoid is your boss may say, can't you try? So if you, hear, if you ever hear the word, can't you just do this? Can't you try? And you can say, yeah, I'll try to get it done in that three days, but it can be as much as seven. And so you have to keep reiterating that because what you need to make sure you avoid is your boss taking it from like, yeah, you know, yeah, boss, man, I'll try. And then leaves and goes back to the stakeholder, says he can get it done in three days. And it's like, <laughs> that's not exactly what it's meant. So you have to, you have to really push back. And a lot of people are going to be afraid. They're like, oh, I'm going to get fired. I'm, 
No, what really ends up happening is you end up building a bit of respect for one, having a backbone, and two, you actually then meet your commitments. There's nothing more frustrating to a business than them making plans and then their plans have to be delayed because it did take seven days. So instead of the three, and now everything else is delayed by four days and they have to replan and reorganize. So when you can start making those commitments and when your boss tries to get you to try, you have to push back. And in the in the immediate future, your estimates, your you know, your commitments will then be respected because they understand, all right, Dylan gave us some realistic stuff. This is how long it's gonna take, and we don't have to worry about it being delayed because of how professional he is when it comes to this. Now, keep in mind that it's gonna be a little bit awkward, and it's always easier to say yes. Can you get done? Of course I can. Um, and then you don't. And then you have to deal with that stress. So you're almost front loading a little bit of your stress, but sometimes there are things that are just a little bit too ridiculous. So um, how do you handle that? Well, sometimes you have to force the business to remove other things. You say, look, I can get this done in five days, but last I checked, you wanted this in the next five days. Which one's it gonna be? And you really have to stress that issue because the business may just assume that you're gonna get both done in those five days. They're really trying to get as much out of you as they can because they're worried about the bottom line. They're worried, as you should be as a developer, right? You work for a business. It's part of your job to keep that business running. Make you know, You're only hired for a job because you can return a profit in some way or fashion. So you have to understand that. And that's why it's important to, to handle yourself professionally. And so when you do commit to things that are reasonable and you do give those correct date ranges that as long as it's not something outside your control, like, oh, they didn't give me the requirements till a week into my commitment, then you have committed. As a professional, you have committed, you are going to get it done, even if it work, means sometimes working overtime. Now, what you don't do is work overtime when somebody else makes a mistake, when the business changes the requirements, when the business doesn't give you the requirements till later in the day uh, or later in the game, right? Where it throws off your estimates. You know, if I commit to getting something done Friday and they committed to giving me the stuff I needed Monday, but they didn't give it to me till Wednesday, guess what? My commitment's no longer valid to get it done by Friday because now we're two days off. You know, we're gonna shoot it back two days. So you can't have that expectation and the expectation to have you work overtime to meet that isn't a good one. And there's going to be times where the your your boss is going to say hey we might have to put in some extra hours and you know the, give or take a few hours here or there isn't going to hurt but long term extra hours for two three weeks actually causes more harm than good and it's okay for you to speak up about that and say look i work hard my 40 hours and you know i we just got done working a week overtime i'm going to burn out my code's going to go down it's just, there's nothing i can do about it i'm, I'm at my mental limit my capacity here and we're going to start making mistakes and you know i'm not going to kick the test out because that might be something that they might uh, the business might say well we don't care about the test just get it done right well it's a very give and take sort of balance when it comes with commitments and everything that goes in because at the end of the day you have to look at it a little bit of a negotiation where you are the technical expert in this case you know the system you know what's possible in the realm of what's already built, what's available, how we can make it better. And you have to stand up to that and say, because if, if not, you're just going to be have things pushed on you, pushed on you, pushed on you, and then everything's gonna come tumbling down. You're gonna be very unhappy for one. You're not gonna deliver the quality of work that you should expect or your boss would expect. And you, you know, the business will be even more frustrated. So, a lot of times as developers, we're worried about shipping a lot of code. Where What you really need to be worried about is shipping good quality code when you ship code. It is a much better position to be in to ship um, flawless, uh, you know, as low bug possible code as possible, only if a few features, than to ship a bunch of features that are buggy and breaking and causing issues because those issues, they cascade and over the years it becomes more and more and more complex. So when you're handling your commitments, keep that in mind is that you are really looking out for the business's uh, long-term future with this product, with this feature. And they're gonna say, well, it's a one-off. I have 
fallen for that it's a one-off thing twice now never again will i ever fall for like oh it's a one-off because it never works it's always like oh well we're just gonna do this one quick thing we don't care that we're gonna do it you have to fight those battles too uh because you're the only one that's gonna fight them and you, it's also gonna be part of your responsibility to fix it when those things don't happen so um you know just a just a sort of cap the the talk here couple things watch out for the try and just and be very clear when those yes i will try but it's still going to be three to seven days right um you know watch out for saying yes just because you don't want an awkward confrontation you know you should be able to as a professional stand up to other professionals to say hold up that's impossible or hold up let me tell you why this is going to be an extreme challenge and why we may not meet that date right and be respectful, right? Even saying that's impossible might be a little bit disrespectful. You need to, in a professional world, be able to communicate clearly, concisely, and respectfully. Now, you're also going to have to say yes. And when you do and you find that commitment, you're going to need to commit to it on your time, right? And say, look, I'm going to get it done. And when the overtime talk comes on occasion, you know, every now and again, you are going to need to maybe put in extra hours to get this done because it actually has to get done, you know. And you're, sometimes you're going to have to be able to tell what's really a priority and what's sort of just a silly thing where someone's upset. And unfortunately, that's not as big of a priority. But you're going to have to wait, uh, fight those battles. But you're also going to fight the, fight the battles where, you know, I'm not going to commit to overtime because of someone else's mistakes. I'm sorry. You know, as a professional, I handled everything professionally. And you know, my quality of work will go down if you're expecting work, me to work three weeks of overtime. I'm not talking about a day or two here or there. I'm talking about three solid weeks of overtime, two weeks of overtime. We're going to have more issues than we are benefit because of that. And there's been studies to back all this up. And sometimes you're just going to have to say no. And sometimes the, the ask is too great the, to accomplish the task. But you're going to have to stand up for the code. You're going to have to stand up for yourself. And when you make commitments, you're going to have to accomplish them because that's what it means to be a professional. So give those date, give those ranges, reiterate the, 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 you know, the sort of, there's a 90% chance it'll get done in three to four days, but it could go as high as seven days if we run into issues. So it's up to you to do that. And you'll get, you'll be more respected in the process and people will be able to count on you more. You know, if you keep on giving two day things, and it keeps taking five days. They're not going to count on you. They're not going to trust you. But you say, look, it's going to take three to seven days and it takes five days. Great. You've met your commitment 100% of the time. And if you deliver it early, even better, much better to under promise and over deliver. And that's the sort of mentality I want you to have with your commitments. So as always, guys, thank you so much for watching the video. Don't forget to comment, like, subscribe, share, support me on Patreon all that good stuff. And of course, uh, check out my courses in the description below. Hit that notification bell. I'll see you next time. And while you're at it, why don't you share some of your horror stories or heaven stories? What would be the opposite of a horror story? Uh, someone let me know in the comments below and share some of those as well. Hey guys, thanks for watching the video. Don't forget to check out my 100 algorithm challenge course, get you prepped for those technical interviews to make sure you get nice offers. I, I actually just added some new content to it so you can get prepared for those technical phone screens as well. There's a link in the description to get it for just $9.99.